class today. Uh, we're going to go over surfing on top, so we're going to go over cross space inside control, the type I use for cross space, and as a smaller person, then I, uh, I attend to the pressure as much as I can and getting the weight on the right points. Then we're going to go over mount, then we're going to go over knee right, and maybe I'll put a bit of skull right in it as well. So we're going to go over these points today. But we're going to start today just with a bit of joint mobility, just a couple of minutes before we start the training, just to get a bit warmed up. So please stand up. And we're going to start looking up and down. Yeah. And a bit about me. Uh, I have been training Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for 10 years now. And, and I'm a black belt. So yeah, that's pretty much about me. And look to the right and left. And small circles. So fun to see all of you guys today. And turn around to the other. And shoulders. And the other circle. Paper circles, loosening up our shoulders, and the other side. And left and right here, activate the core. And stop in the middle, open up the chest. So, palms facing up. So the first thing I always try to do is to get the knee into the armpit and the other knee to the hip. I position my hand over his hips if I possibly can, but if I can't, if I'm against a bigger opponent, then I also use the frame just where I cut the hip and then put the hand over just to keep him on the floor. Because the thing that I want most is to keep his hips stable so I can follow. So this is the first thing here. The second thing is I always try to get the cross face as soon as I can, as you probably most know. So I try to get the cross face as soon as I can. And there are some things with the cross face that I attend especially to. So the first thing that I start to do is I put my hand under and I grab the armpit here. So I grab under the armpit and I cut the, cut the uh, hand. And the next thing I do is that I pull him close to me. So from here, the position that I'm going to do from here is that I 
use my chest and I slide it up under and then I press you up. So you feel it here. Okay. Instead of just pushing or leaning forward, going over the chin, I try to put my shoulder underneath and then I push up. So the pressure goes from here. I have both my knees stable, close to him. And I, I often use this one here where I cut, it, cut and pull him towards me. If I can, then I put my hand under and I'm always stable with my weight on my legs. So I'm never like leaning forward. That's really important. So from here, I grab under, I pull him towards me as close as I can. I use my chest and I push up here. So this should make like a good pressure just to hold it. Okay, you feel it here? Yeah, it's good. Okay, do you have any questions about this one? Is yeah. The only time that Kyle keeps his hand down while you're doing the shoulder attack. <laughs> so here, and then I put my hand over, I use my chest, and it's really important to use the chest. So, so while I'm using the chest, I'm keeping myself as close to him as I possibly can. I pull him towards me, and then I press up. So he should feel the pressure there. And if I go like too far, then I might lose the pressure and he can just flick me right over. So that's nothing I want here. So that's the reason why I'm always stable on my legs and using my chest on his chest. Yes? When you pull him towards you, yeah? are you simply keeping the, the distance close or are you trying to bend his spine? Uh, I'm mostly thinking about keeping the distance closed. Yeah. But yeah, I'm not especially thinking about bending the spine. I'm just thinking about keeping him close and also I can follow here. So if he starts if he starts moving here, then I just follow. I just keep myself close and the weight on and then I put the pressure on, I release it, I put it again. So that's the thing I'm thinking about the most. Any other questions? Yeah. yeah. What? Two. Here. Uh, yeah, I sometimes do that, but uh, like in many case scenario, people try to put the frame like back as much as they can. So often I, I get the frame inside, but then I work with that. But if it's possible, then I try to put him close to me and from here the same. But it's important just to keep the pressure and drag him towards you and put the pressure on the neck. Okay, any more questions? Then we're going to do this with a partner two to three times per person. I will walk around and then we do like building resistance later. Okay, so partner up. from the opponent and just do the same thing you're using the pressure and just remember to drag the opponent towards you then you go under the chin and you go up so you're putting putting your shoulder under the chin of the opponent okay so one and a half minute per person let's start again I will walk around yeah do you have any questions about, about this technique? Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Because I'm very small, yes. I need to have the water for this. Yes. Um, I shall get on the arm. Yes. Yeah, I try to just grab what I can. But, uh, if it's possible, then it's best to like grab under. And often I get it. I'm often the smaller person as well not often the bigger one. So otherwise I just try to grab the hold as I can under the shoulder, just where I can. Or I can also grab the hands together, pull them in, and then get a bite of the armpits. Yep. And I, I kind of dance the opposite. Yeah. In that I need to get my shoulder in under his chin. Yeah. I always have to move my knees back to yeah. the top of yeah. so I lost, I lost the so from here, are you yeah. are you talking about like going yeah. back yeah. and then? In order to get my shoulder, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, but that's okay. If you're yeah. controlling the hip, yeah. then you can release the pressure a bit on the hand. You can move back and then go back up. 
and that's also a part of like surfing on top, just being movable. Yeah. Yes. What did you say? The hand position. The hand position. Yeah. Hats. Yeah. Uh, yeah, my hat position. I use my chest more. So from here, my hat position would be here, and then I. The hat. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the hat position is just over the opponent, over the middle. So you don't have to on the mat? No, I don't do that. But, uh, yeah, some people do, and if I'm like, if he's trying to roll me over, then I might put the hat down, but usually I try to stay mobile here, so I'm like uh, changing between and putting my hip down, then I go back under, go back under the chin, so yeah, so I just keep it off the floor. Uh, yeah. You, so raise your hips and turn your back so into him, so you're getting more angle. Are you talking about like here? There and then the other yeah. way. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I use my hips as well. And it, like I said, it's okay. Like for me, I think about more being movable. So I always think about controlling the hip or the uh, shoulders, at least one of them. Uh, if I can be static, then I do both. But if he starts moving, then I might have to switch my hip, go back under and being movable here on top is the key for me and especially when you're up against like a bigger opponent because they are then stronger than you and and if you're just static then they might flip you over so i'm going to go over the next position like from here uh, i'm going to go to the knee right so that's the reason why i often use this frame here over the hip because it's easy for me to change it with the knee and from this uh, how i use the knee right is like many people use it where they put the uh, knee in the solar plexus, uh, but I always use it similar way. I cut the ankle over the uh, hip here, so I just place the ankle and I make it 90 degrees. So I'm never lazy with the ankle here. I put my knee right over, so I'm controlling the hips here. So if uh, Kaya yeah, starts moving, then I can put my hands down on the mat and I can follow him here. So here it's really easy for me to stay mobile as well. And then I can go again under, put my hands maybe grab together, put my hands over and using the shoulder pressure, going up again, changing position and he starts to move around and I can follow him here pretty Effortlessly. Okay, uh, so we're going to try this next. Do you have any question about this technique? Okay, either just stay in the knee right, or if you want to change side control up to knee right, try to hold the opponent, and we're just going to do it two to three times, and then we change the roll. Okay, and start. So if I can follow you, and you were talking about like uh, if he's trying to get the leg, which is common, so he's going here, the thing I can do from here is I can put my hands down, I can even grab together, and I just go back into uh, side control, then I can start like going over this frame, I can even go back up and then I just follow here. But the thing I try to do as well is I, I'm careful about this hand as well. So if he's circling this way, then I just try to follow here. Ah, I go back down, I keep the position, I can even go again over, and then on top. So I'm always careful about this, and this is the thing I'm being movable on top. And that's, that's what serves me the most as a smaller person. But the next thing we're gonna go over is as well, like from here, uh, we're gonna go over to the mount. So that's that's a transition that's really easy from the knee right. So from here, I, the only thing I do is I put my knee down, I rinse it like over, and I go down to the mount. 
And this is the thing I use a lot as well. I use the windshield wiper a lot. So when he's like active on the bottom, then I'm always like using the windshield wiper going back up and surfing down again. And this is really important in this position to put the knee on the floor and switch the hips. And then I go back under here. Okay, so this is the one thing. The next thing from here that I want to focus on from the mountain, just going over, lightly over the pressure points from here. But this is the same. It's the cross fist I'm using, the same as in side control. So from here, I'm always thinking about the same thing. I'm using my chest for the pressure and I'm keeping my hips down. So this, the mount that I use a lot is where I, of course, try to isolate the hands. And the same thing here, I go under the armpit, I drag him towards me, and I put the pressure on his, uh, under the chin. I have to be careful here not to overcommit my weight too high. So I'm always keeping the hips low and I'm pressing down. Either I'm pulling my knees together here, so when he like bridges, then I just follow him here always, or I put my uh, legs under his knees and I press him down from here. Either I can use one if he's uh, bridging, so here I use legs, I change the positions, I put my hip down, I change the again back up and then I put the uh, cross face on. So this is the thing we're going to do next. We're going to start here in the knee right. I'm going to use the frames from here in order to put my hands on the floor. Be careful that he's not grabbing under. I'm going to put my knee down to the mount and use the cross face. Press it down. He's going to be have a resistance. So I'm going to use the hooks. He maybe goes the other way. I'm going to use the other hook. I follow him. I put my knees together. He's bridging and I follow him here. And if he goes to the side, then I'll just keep my knees up and start to cross face him down again. Or take the back. Do you have any questions about this one? Yeah? If you don't have control of our arm, please still now. Uh, well, if I... If you do not have control of this far arm, you still mount. Or if you don't have control of that arm. If I don't have control of this arm, arm here, yeah. Uh, yeah, then I would, uh, then I would put my hand just down on the mat, so he won't grab under. So here, I'm using the frame, so he can't like reach under. I do the same here. Here I have the hand more like vulnerable, and now I can do the same. I can, I can also put the other frame inside his leg and then go to the mat here. And here I have to be careful to make the position like really tight, but I'm never like squeezing and holding because it's really easy for him to sweep me over them. I'm always movable and he starts bridging, I follow him. So here he bridges again and I follow him. And I put my hips down and I use the cross face here. And I can also change the cross face. If he's going this way and I can if, you, if you're going that way and I feel like I'm losing it, then I change the hand position and the use process on the other sides. Okay, any more questions? This is a question. Yeah? Um, one more thing to do, why do you exaggerate when you come over as opposed to just sliding right to the when I'm, when I'm going over? Yes, when you're going to uh, Are you talking about this? Here. Yes. Uh, I find it harder for him to catch my leg that way. So then I slide it, I slide the hips with power over and then I can pull my legs together underneath. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay, then we're gonna do like with building resistance from knee right. We're gonna uh, play with going over, taking the hand, using the cross face, higher mount, lower mount, using the hips. Just play with it and I will walk around and help you. Okay, two minutes per person. Okay, so I got a couple of good questions. So, uh, 
the first thing that I want to emphasize is when I'm uh, going over to the mount. And I'm using the hook as I was talking about. I might have been using the leg here, going around, being movable, using my hips, go down, go up. And it's really important when I'm going over to the mount that I put the knee to the mat. So it's really important to put the knee when you're going over to the mount down to the mat. And the other knee that I didn't point out uh, earlier, I always keep it close to the rib, uh, rib kits. So if I'm on the knee, then I, then I just put it close to the body. Or if I'm up, I take the knee and I put it to the rib kits here. Okay, so this way I'm holding, uh, holding contact to my opponent. So from this position, I put the knee down and I transition my hips all the way around. So I transition them to the right and here it's really easy and not an effort on the hip or the knee. Because the only thing I'm doing is that I, uh, if I do it on the floor, I put the knee down here, I change the hips and then I go under. And when I finish in the mount, I put the knee down here and then I put my face back and I keep my knees tight here. So I'm not ending up like here, high up and uh, getting the risk of my opponent, opponent uh, sweeping me right away. And the other thing that I got a question about is if you have short legs to use the hooks under the hips, what I do, because I have short legs, I just put my weight uh, further back. So I just keep me, keep myself close to, to the opponent and of course at all the time that I can then I try to like take control over over hands and from here if he starts bridging then I can use my hooks and be movable here. And if he's going to the right then I use the left hook to control and if he's going to the left then I use the right hook and I put my weight on the right hip. So next, that's the next thing we're going to emphasize now, is to be in the mount. So we're going to use the cross face from here, and I'm going to uh, use the cross face to the, uh, on the right hand, and if he starts to go this way here, then I might like go further back, I use the hooks, he starts spritzing, then I go left or right, or if he if he's close to getting out, like he's on his side, and now I sometimes use one move where I change the hands, I put my hand just over here, and I just go over the chin, and then I can change to the other side. So that's that's effective. It's a bit mean, but not that mean. <laughs> so. So he goes over to this side, and I'm kind of like losing that position, so you're reaching here. Okay, um, I feel that I'm, he might be getting out, and I just take my hand, I drive it over, and I go back under, and change the direction. Okay, so up, using the cross face, changing the pressure, using your hips, going up and down with the partner. Two minutes per person. Okay. me up. The thing that I try to do most or use the most is I use my chest and I use my shoulders as well to like try to direct the hands in the way that I want. And I use this a lot in guard passing when I'm keeping control. So from this side here I use the uh, chest and the shoulder to try to get the hand over. And here I can even, might even go to arm triangle or I can use the chest to press it forward. So I use my whole body, because my whole body against his arm, then I should be stronger. Uh, the other thing is uh, when I'm doing the switch, where I was using my forearm or the fist or stuff like that. So when he's like, does a big bridge on the side, what I, the most thing I'm focusing on here is just to keep his 
keep them to look or get them to look the other direction. Uh, or I can also take the back if I want. If it's this far, then I can also take the back, take the gift wrap, and go to the back. But if I want to like keep them in the mount, then when I'm doing the uh, using the hand, the most thing I'm, I'm thinking about is to get them to uh, face the other way. So I either use my uh, face, I can use my forearm, I can face it up or down. But the only thing is, and you have to be careful with this with your partner, with your partner, not like smashing through. You're just like getting him to face the other direction. Under. That's the only thing I'm doing. I'm just getting him to face the other direction because, as you see, if he's like reaching this way and I'm getting to turn this way here, then it's really hard for him to continue with his movement and he has to start all over again on the other side. So, the last thing we are going to do, or do you have more questions about this? Yeah? Um, you're more like posted on your hands here. Yeah. Okay, can you show me? Uh, so, so, um, so when you're like your chest is more up here, yeah, and you're pushed on your like if you collapse in here, yeah, to kind of crunch me down mm -hmm. and then okay, and then try to swing it okay, over. how do you prevent that? Uh, so from here, if I'm Facing, I, yeah, and and from here, if I'm facing with my hands, I'm always like posting on my hands, so I'm keeping my weight on my hips. But if he's posting here, uh, often I take the cross face and then I circle. I use the circle, circular movements with the hands to get under. So always when he's like grabbing the hand, or I can post, I can do this here, and I just play with it. The thing here, I, yeah. Often circle, often change the direction, being mobile, using my hips, squeezing, turning, uh, yeah, using my body. Uh, some other question? Okay, the last thing we're doing is with the building force from, or building resistance from the opponent, is we're going to go all over all the things that we've uh, put, put in here today. And we're going to start in the side control and we're going to surf on top. So from here, the opponent is going to give like uh, minimal resistance. We're going to use the hand, we're going to use the uh, cross face, might change my hip, go under again, go up on the knee, the all, all the way, use my hand over to the mount, change directions here again to the knee right, using hands down. So actively changing positions on top. Okay, so questions about this? Then we're gonna do this two minutes per person. Yeah. <laughs> so find the partner or with the same partner. if the person is uh, starting to attack this leg here then the thing that I do here is to post down and I go back to the side control and often if I can I try to put my weight over the arm because it's comfortable for me to isolate the arm with the leg uh, the other question was if the what was it was your question so if they're a bit strong with the forearm yes the so if if he's strong with this arm here, then we were talking about if I should start moving. But uh, I never start moving unless I have a solid, if I have isolated the arm. So my chest is chest to chest. But if I don't have any contact here, if he starts pushing away, then I might lose the position here. So rather, I try to just focus on like uh, losing my chest, going to the side, going back, going back to the uh, knee right here. Okay, do you have any more questions about? One. Yes? Um, if you're going, I, I would find that I was able to kind of get my knee in there. Okay. In, know, that's just an issue of space management. Oh, in, in what position? Uh, oh. Your side control. Yes. I have a fight kind of thing. Yeah, yeah put the knee. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this can be an issue as well. But the thing for this, what I would use if I have the grip here, is to start like moving my hips 
put them back in again. And always be tight in everything you're doing, even though you're being moved or using the pressure. You have to have chest pressure or, or like pressing on the hips. You have to control either the hips or the surface of the opponent every time. Okay, you have more questions about this class? Then it was super fun having you today and I look forward to seeing you on Friday.